There's lots of fantastic YouTube channels out there and I wouldn't want to rehash content. That's why I've never done anything till now. But I have an idea that I wanted to share and it is the use of a one and a quarter inch grid. The first few videos in my YouTube channel, the first little sub-series, will be on crafting my modular tiles which use a one and a quarter inch grid. Here's an example of them. Now everything I, uh, I do assumes that you have some familiarity with terrain crafting. If you don't, Google DM Scotty, The DM's Craft, and The DMG Info. Those guys have, they are the gold standard. They have great ideas. Most of what you'll see me do is not my idea. I'll try to cite where I can, but it would be overwhelming to, to do so. So in this first video, I'm just going to try and explain what new thing I hope to bring to the hobby. Uh, I'll lead off by saying I'm going to reference products like Dwarven Forge and Hearst Arts a lot because they are the industry standards, and it's convenient to cite them as a reference point to demonstrate why my tiles are different. Um, in no way am I bashing those companies. Those products are gr amazing. You can spend days at a time going through Google Image, looking at beautiful dungeons laid out. Um, they look phenomenal. They're great all around. But in my opinion, they suffer from one significant drawback, and that's how walls are represented. That's what I hope to solve with my one and a quarter inch grid. Um, last note before we go off, I am releasing the first several videos on the same day because I hope to earn you as a YouTube follower. Um, rather than post now, lose your interest and you maybe come back next week to see how to start constructing the tiles. I'm doing everything. You'll be able to go cradle to grave today if you want to. So as soon as this video is over, you can go to 002. All right, so off we go. If you use gridded tiles, you're probably aware of the problem of wall thickness. Consider this excerpt from a map. The scale is 1 square equals 10 feet. There are two hallways coming in from the west, which share a wall with each other, and a hallway coming from the east, sharing a wall with the room. Now the vast majority of Dwarven Forge and Hearst Arts tiles are 2 inches by 2 inches, allowing for 4 squares, totaling the 10 foot box. The miniature for a standard medium sized character has a 1 inch base. And for a large character, a 2 inch base. This means the large creature should be able to physically fit in the hallway tiles. But consider the usual approaches to modeling the standard 10 foot hallway. Some argue for placing the walls on top of the squares. This preserves the overall size of the dungeon. However, there's only one physical inch of space in that tile, assuming the walls are the typical half inch thick. This means medium characters have to march single file, and a large size mini cannot fit at all, which is mechanically incorrect. Another approach is attaching the walls to the sides. This preserves the play area such that miniatures can fit, however it is impossible to construct the two hallways to the west. Still another approach is to attach the walls to the sides, but offset the squares by one half. This is helpful in a few ways such as handling door spaces, but requires miniatures to straddle the grid lines. And the tile presents the same problem as the previous one, in that it simply cannot fit in the space that it needs to. Although I've only illustrated hallways here, this same concept applies to corners and sides. Why is this a big deal? If the dungeon is non-linear and reconnects with itself at any point, any offset introduced, such as by wall thickness, will propagate and it will never meet up properly. So what is the solution? Some would say simply redraw the map to account for squares lost to walls while preserving the original spirit and intent of the map. Others might just adjust the map on the fly when placing the tiles on the game table. Still others would simply ignore it, disregarding the inaccuracy as unimportant. And of course, all of these are fine. But my personal goal was to be able to build any dungeon mapped with the conventional 10 foot scale and to build it as originally drawn. This is because many old school modules, which I happen to enjoy, were drawn using shared walls well before the time of tiles. And also, I've found that in my homebrew modules, it's a pain to have to draw a map while leaving half square dead space for wall thickness. So my solution is this. Instead of one inch squares, 
use one and a quarter inch squares. Instead of half inch walls, use quarter inch walls. Place the walls on the tile. I'm going to rescale some things on the screen now. The map is the same. A square still represents 10 feet and therefore contains a 2 by 2 set of spaces, each of which is intended to hold a single medium sized creature. However, each of those spaces is now 1.25 inches instead of 1 inch. This means a single tile is no longer 2 inches squared, but rather 2.5 inches squared. Miniature bases remain exactly the same, but are rescaled on the screen according to our new scale. Consider the following scenario. Here's a standard one wall tile, or a side tile. The wall eats a quarter inch of space, but an inch still remains on the two affected squares. So a standard miniature still fits. And the grid has been perfectly preserved with no space lost or gained. So we've talked about the mechanical advantages of the one and a quarter inch grid. Here are some other ancillary benefits. For one thing, it's aesthetically pleasing. It just plain looks less cramped. But it's not so much larger that your standard miniatures look disproportionate. In fact, if anything, I think they look more appropriate in context. On a related note, it's a little easier to fit furniture and other dungeon trappings that you craft. Last, it inherently supports 30mm heroic scale minis for those who prefer to use them. By the way, there's certainly no rule that you must make only 2x2 two two tiles. It is totally possible to make any custom shape that you want to. I have chosen to focus on the 2x2 two two standard because I want to mimic the collectability, storability, and uniform tactile feel of Dwarven Forge and Hearst Arts products. How about the downsides? Well, for starters, you'll lose 20% of your table space. If you're the kind of DM, like me, who only lays down tiles that the characters can see, shuffling them out as the party moves along, then this isn't a concern. But if you like to lay out all of Undermountain on your game table, this will become a factor. Also, if you want to model a narrow, one square wide hallway, the system breaks down because there will only be three quarters of an inch usable space. However, this limitation is no better or worse than the standard one inch approaches I discussed earlier, so it's not really a problem specific to the one and a quarter inch system. So there you have it, the case for a one and a quarter inch grid. If this has even remotely piqued your interest, I ask that you stick around for the next few videos as I show you how to build my version of modular tiles as well as doors for them. There are two ways to handle doors. It's an advantage of the system, I believe. I didn't get into it in this video. Again, I'm doing the whole mini series here up front. You can go click 002 after you're done with this. I won't always be that prolific, but to get started and hopefully earn you as a YouTube follower, I'm doing this whole series right now. So go ahead, click on 002, and we'll see you there.